Happy New Year's, everyone. Today, I wanted to wrap up the entire year. So, doing that, I'm going to be going over my top favorite horror movies of this year. Starting us off is going to be The Last Voyage of the Demeter at number 10. Directed by Andre Overdahl, The Last Voyage of the Demeter grows $21.8 million. It has a Rotten Tomato score of 49% with an audience score of 75%. I like this movie, but there's a reason it's at the bottom of this list. When I think of my favorite vampire films, I won't be thinking of this film. I enjoyed the premise and give them points for creativity, but all they get is an E for effort. Coincidentally, that's what it took to watch this movie. What is really disappointing is the fact that I watched it completely and still have no idea what it's about. Sad. Uh, number 9, Thanksgiving. Directed by Eli Roth, Thanksgiving grossed $45 million and has a Rotten Tomato score of 83% with a 79% audience score. I think my movie review of Thanksgiving says it all. This movie wasn't bad, but definitely had its questionable moments. I thought the poor acting would take me out before The Pilgrim did. Maybe it's one of those movies you watch to pick out the funny scenes. This is kind of why I don't really like slashers. The situations felt forced and weren't really scary. but. That's all I will say about the film. If you want my full critique, go check out my movie review of Thanksgiving. Next up at number 8, Insidious Red Door. Directed by Patrick Wilson, Insidious the Red Door grossed $189 million worldwide and has a Rotten Tomato score of 37%, with an audience score of 70%. Not gonna lie, this was probably the biggest letdown of 2023 for me at least. It took me becoming an adult to even muster up the courage to rewatch the Insidious movies. They were that good, especially the first one. Maybe that's why I couldn't really understand why they decided to drop the ball with Red Door. Don't get me wrong, it, it was okay, but I didn't become a fan of the Insidious franchise because the films were okay. It could just be me, but I hold them to a higher standard, and Insidious the Red Door did not meet that standard. Moving on to number 7, The Exorcist Believer. Directed by David Gordon Green, The Exorcist Believer grossed $136 million worldwide and has a Rotten Tomato score of 22% and an audience score of 59%. I liked how I was able to become a part of the Exorcist community with this film. I haven't seen the iconic Exorcist movies, so it was pretty cool to be able to join in on the fun with The Exorcist Believer. Even though the original Exorcist is very dated, it's still considered probably the scariest movie of all time. The Exorcist Believer, not so much. I felt like it was more of a film to lead you into the next subsequent films, while also reintroducing the Exorcist narrative. Not the best money I ever spent, but it was alright, I guess. Uh, next up, Scream 6. Directed by Tyler Gillett and Matt Bettinelli, Scream 6 did the slasher subgenre justice, grossing $169 million worldwide and scoring 76% on Rotten Tomatoes with an audience score of 91%. I never really liked the Scream movies. It's not a franchise I follow closely. I understand if that rubs some people the wrong way, me calling myself a horror fan and all, but it is what it is. However, Ghostface is my favorite costume, so you might catch me dressed as him on Halloween. That being said, I did enjoy Scream 6. I saw this movie in theaters and the whole time I was never disappointed. They kept the suspense coming and saved the whole Ghostface reveal to the end of the film, which I liked. Not sure if this movie was accepted by the OG fans of the franchise, but it's okay for me. Next up, Saw X or Saw 10. Directed by Kevin Grutert, Saw 
X would gross $110 million worldwide with a Rotten Tomato score of 80% and an audience score of 89%. You get exactly what you expect with every single Saw movie and Saw X is no exception. The amount of times I spent covering my eyes and gritting my teeth is only a compliment to the excellent visuals displayed in the film. Not my favorite franchise, but still deserving of its fan base and longtime success. Saw films make me want to be a good person. I'm not sure if that's the purpose of the films, but just in case I run into any John Kramers, I'm not taking any chances. Uh, next up, No One Will Save You. Directed by Brian Dufield, No One Will Save You, although being released on the streaming service Hulu, gave every other horror movie this year a run for its money. With a Rotten Tomato score of 82% and an audience score of 56%, no one saw No One Will Save You coming. I say this a lot in my videos, but I pretty much avoid alien themed horror movies, except for the Alien and Predator franchises because of past trauma. And No One Will Save You made me even more afraid of extraterrestrials. Probably my favorite cat and mouse scene of 2023, No One Will Save You had me screaming at the TV. It was really good. Not sure if this movie will get a sequel, probably not, but it's still going in my book as one of the top alien based horror movies I have ever seen. Next up, the Nun 2. Directed by Michael Chavez, The Nun 2 was one of the highest grossing horror movies of 2023, with a staggering $268 million made worldwide. It has a Rotten Tomato score of 52% and an audience score of 73%. The Nun 2 was our latest addition to the Conjuring universe, a franchise that has been giving us jump scares and nightmares for the better part of the last decade. My initial thoughts of The Nun 2 were lackluster at best, but when I really sat down and watched it, I was actually surprised. In my opinion, they managed to capture that same level of intensity known to the Conjuring movies. Still one of my favorite franchises and all around just a good bunch of films to get your blood pumping, I don't see the ending to the Conjuring universe anytime soon. Uh, at our number two spot, Five Nights at Freddy's. Directed by Emma Temme, Five Nights at Freddy's blew away every other horror film this year with a whopping $295 million worldwide. It has a Rotten Tomatoes score of 31% with an audience score of 87%. For new fans and old fans alike, the Five Nights at Freddy's movie delivered. For a lot of horror game enthusiasts, Five Nights at Freddy's shook the genre when it first released almost a decade ago. With its very specific gameplay mechanics, FNAF and every sequel, spin-off, book, and film would follow the same winning formula, with new additions splashed in here and there. This was probably my most anticipated movie for all of 2023. The FNAF movie was a good horror movie, but was a great movie, if that makes sense. What it lacked in being scary, it made up for in comedy, mystery, and suspenseful situations. I hope to see the story of FNAF continue to grow and eventually give us the answers to some of the questions that have been asked by the dedicated supporters it has attracted over the years. And last at our top spot, Evil Dead Rise. Directed by Lee Cronin, Evil Dead Rise cemented itself as one of the scariest films this year. It made around $147 million worldwide and has a Rotten Tomato score of 84% and an audience score of 76%. From the very beginning, I was kind of using Evil Dead as the reference that I would compare all the other horror movies to this year. In order to surpass Evil Dead Rise, a film would have to give me that same intense feeling, accompanied by mind-blowing cinematics and original storytelling, all while remaining completely authentic. That's a big thing for me, remaining authentic. When I walked out of the theater, I felt satisfied. No other movie on this list gave me the same feeling of satisfaction, so that's why Evil Dead Rise is number one on this list. I have said this time and time again in my videos, but what the heck, I'll say it again. Evil Dead is becoming my new favorite horror franchise. If they continue to focus on doing what they do best, they can only succeed with their future.
your endeavors uh that's gonna do it for me thank you guys so much for watching thank you for supporting me for this year hopefully you guys continue to support me into 2024 uh at the time i'm making this video it is 10 53 so we've got about an hour before we are officially into the new year happy new year everybody enjoy time with your loved ones and i will talk to you next time bye